Hello Barat, this is Mashnu and I'm reviewing the game that you sent me a few days ago. Um, you played here the Scandinavian defense in this game and you are trying uh, out different openings that is of course very uh, useful to, um, to enlarge your experience and your knowledge of different setups. This is the Scandinavian defense and um, you also asked me to tell you something about this opening. Well, I must say that I'm not an expert on the Scandinavian defense. I personally, I, I don't play it. Um, well, until now, perhaps I will in the future, but I don't know much theory about this. So, what I want to do uh, to help you with this is to post a web link on the description in the description of this video, and this web link leads to a video where the principles of the Scandinavian defense are very well explained. So you can have a look at that video to uh, prepare for your next game where you want to play this uh, this d5 move. So let's have a look at how this game continued. e takes d5, queen takes d5, knight to c3. Of course it wins the tempo on the queen, but black has a very active queen there on a5. Uh, another option is to go back with the queen to d eight or to play queen to d6 is also a move that is seen sometimes but queen to a5 is the most popular line um, d4 now knight to f6 and now your opponent played here bishop to f4 and well what I've seen about in this type of uh, games is that the most popular line is knight f3 and then black continues first with c6 controlling the d5 square and the b5 square so preventing uh, active play of, of white and then white continues mostly with bishop to c4 and at this point in this position it's very important for black to um, bring the bishop out of the pawn chain because before playing e6 so a move like bishop to f5 is, um, is a good move here um, and then later to continue with e6 um, here the, the most played move is bishop to d2 and now you can play with black e6 already there is no danger with this knight going somewhere attacking the queen there is no direct uh, uh, direct threat the direct combination so this is a, a very nice development with this bishop on f5 uh, targeting the c2 pawn so later perhaps a knight can appear a black knight on, on b4 to enforce more this uh, this idea but well let's let's return to the game because for the theoretical part of this opening i want to um, to ask you to um, to have a look at this uh, other video that i'm going to um, place a web link uh, to on the in the description so e6 you played here so you are locking out up your own bishop locking in here so actually with playing e6 you're actually already telling that you will need to play b6 and bishop to b7 to have this bishop active towards the center. Now, of course, another idea would be here to play bishop to f5 again, just like in the previous variation. But I do understand your um, the, the way that you thought here, that you thought, okay, I just want to control d5 very well, so there is no any advance of this pawn, and your plan is that your bishop is going to be well placed on b6. And I think that that's uh, uh, absolutely a correct idea. Um, it's just a, a bit different than the uh, the strategy that is mostly chosen: bishop to f5 and then e6. Bishop to b5, check. Knight to d7, queen f3. A bit of strange move. Um, you took your time here to think, because it's a bit of an unnatural move and um, after this you decided to play bishop to d6 which is a bit of a defensive move bishop to d6 this position you could have played a bit more aggressive a bit more aggr aggressive by playing bishop to b4 just have a look at this uh, bishop to b4 threatens already queen takes b5 because the knight is pinned also, if this bishop goes away, then you could take on c3, ruining white's pawn structure. So that means that here, in fact, the best uh, alternative for, for white would be to return with this bishop from f4 
to d2 so he would actually have to admit that this development of the bishop was uh, not the correct thing and after this you can simply castle kingside and I think black has a nice position here um, the, of course we need to continue and find a solution for this bishop so rook to b8 b6 bishop to b7 is a good idea and that would also make use of this misplaced queen on f3 I don't like this queen on f3 it looks aggressive but it's actually not a very good place I think um, let's continue with the game you played bishop to d6 he took the bishop you took back now queen oh, I'm sorry knight to um, to e2 played by your opponent castling kingside castling kingside um, locking up up the center at the a moment where you make a comment about this that it would be an option also to lock the center with d5 well it has two two sides on one hand locking the center you do control e4 very well but on the other hand this bishop doesn't look good so then after d5 perhaps it would be an idea to play b6 and bishop to a6 to trade it for this light square bishop of white um, but in the game castling excellent decision now here you played um, rook to b8 rook to b8 with the plan of playing the bishop to uh, b7 and you also write another variation here that the, uh, playing a6 and here you ask yourself whether after bishop to a4 b5 would be a good sacrifice I don't think that black gets enough compensation for this exchange here after queen takes a8 knight to b6 queen goes back to f3 and the knight takes a4 I think that um, black doesn't have compensation for this uh, exchange that you have sacrificed just look at this queen is actually a bit of out of play here with this blocked fifth rank and um, the uh, pieces of black are not very well coordinated in this position so I think this would have been uh, a mistake this uh, this possible sacrifice there so a much a more logical thing is to play rook to b8 like you did with the idea of playing b6 I don't know if you thought about this but instead of b6 it would, would also have been an option to play b5 um, the same idea is to bring the bishop to b7 but with b5 you also control the c4 square and you also threat to advance eventually this pawn to b4 so here a3 to prevent b4 and then you can play a6 the pawn is very well protected you can still play bishop to b7 and the difference is that this square on c4 is very well controlled so imagine perhaps this knight can later in the game go to c4 in some lines so this would be an interesting alternative to b6 to play b5 here you played b6 knight to e4 and here yes you write that you probably missed bishop to b7 here uh, yeah I agree bishop to b7 would have been a good move uh, you played it a bit later in the game but here it would have been definitely a very good move to pin this knight on B from uh, e4 and here you have a nice position of course white can take here with check and after we retake he must move the queen for example for g to g3 but you have placed your bishop on this beautiful square b7 let's return to the game knight to takes e4 was your move queen takes e4 now knight to f6 winning a tempo on the queen the queen went to c6 and here bishop to a6 uh, yeah I understand that queen, bishop to a6 I think it's a good idea to trade this bishop that actually the the white bishop is uh, is stronger at this point stronger than the black one so it's a good idea to trade it and besides that if the pawns are locked later with playing d5 then this bishop will be a bad bishop and this will be a good one in an end game so um, good idea to, to trade it with bishop to a6 bishop takes a6 
win takes a6. Oh, and by the way, I must not forget to show you this because here you write that you uh, had calculated the consequences of queen takes d6 here with by white, and you are absolutely right here. Absolutely right that queen takes d6 would have been a mistake of white because then you can take on d3 and then after this play rook to d8, the queen must go away, and then queen to d2. Um, these two pawns of white on d3 and d4 will be very weak. So this is a very good position for black. You had done the correct evaluation in this position, so you uh, you could play bishop to a6. Now your opponent didn't take this pawn on d6, he took the bishop, you took back, and here he played rook to e8, because the knights attacked. Rook to c8, and now here he played queen takes d6. Um, you actually wanted to play rook takes c2, and then you got confused and um, didn't actually forgot that with rook takes c2 you were attacking here the knight twice, so it, it would have been a very good move to take on c2, and well, because of this confusion, you played a rook to d8 here. Um, of course, rook takes c2 is, is absolutely very good. Uh, not only because of this attack on the um, on the knight, but also because you get s such strong rook there on the second rank, attacking b2, options to play the other rook to c8, and controlling this c file completely. This is a, a very nice position for uh, for black. So, well, unfortunately, your um, you got a bit confused here, and you played rook to d8. The queen went to e7. Now, of course, we cannot play uh, rook takes e2 now because the rook will be hanging on uh, d8. So, rook to, to e8 first. Queen goes here, and now you take on c2. It's still on time. Uh, the difference is that now the b2 pawn is defended by the queen. So, it's a little best, less strong than. Um, than in the previous variation. Knight to c3 was played now, and queen to d3, very strong move. Controlling these important squares here, um, preparing to activate your queen much more. And he played rook to d1, and you went with the queen to f5. And you write here that uh, you are very happy with the queen on f5 because it's very active. And yes, it is absolutely. This is a very good position since you are putting pressure on f2 here. And um, your opponent played here rook to e2 to diminish this, uh, this pressure. You took the rook, he took back, and this is an important point. Um, here you played the move queen to c2 and I find that here you actually missed a simple way of improving your position um, you didn't have much time here about 20 minutes for the next 20-20 uh, moves something like that so you had to uh, you couldn't invest much time uh, but in a very simple way, if you ask yourself here, what is my worst position, my worst piece, and how can I improve the position of my worst piece, then you will definitely, in just a few seconds, find the answer that the most uh, passive uh, piece here of black is the rook on e8. And a very simple way of improving the position would be to play rook to c8. With rook to c8, you control the c-file, you are threatening to enter on c2 one more time. So this is um, quite dangerous for, uh, for white. He cannot really prevent this by playing rook to c1. This would be a terrible mistake because of rook takes, knight takes, and then queen to c2 is uh, killing already. 
you know the, he the only way to defend the knight and prevent this check uh, checkmate on the back rank is to play queen to e1 so you force him to uh, go backwards with all his pieces and you can take already on b2 so that means that in this position after rook to c8 he cannot fight for the c file so he must admit that you are controlling now this uh, this this c file this open c file so i think this is um, a moment uh, where it was not that difficult to find a better move than queen to c2 because in the game after queen to c2 he played queen to d2 and here the queens were traded and let's say the tension of the uh, the position diminishes now because you don't have now this uh, this second rank idea of entering and, and keep attacking there um, at this point you play rook to c8 and we are getting into an end game that is a little better for black but it's not that clear uh, he plays f3 here knight to d5 then he comes closer to the center with the king that's the same thing that you do then knight to g3 king to e7 and at this point your opponent offered you a draw and uh, you uh, talked with your um, with your team captain and he advised you to accept the draw so this is what you did now thinking in terms of doing the best thing for the team result this is a very good decision um, looking at the position on the board I think black has better chances here for two reasons this endgame is better for black one is that black controls the C file and the other reason is that if we look at the pawn structure white has a weakness on d4 this isolated pawn on d4 can become a weakness um, it's of course not that easily won this position but you could try this and that's what you actually write in your message that after you had agreed to draw um, you and your opponent continued playing just uh, unofficially so just for, for fun let's say uh, this position and you won this with black so um, yeah I think this is better for black but I can understand that in a, in a team game if the uh, result at that moment on the other boards uh, tells you that it would be a good idea to accept the draw yeah that's being a team player means then to accept this draw and that's what you did now I must say that I'm very happy to see that you are um, and that's what I write in your, your commentary between the moves that you are thinking very consciously about the ideas behind your moves and behind the plans that you uh, that you make and this is absolutely a way to improve your chess being very conscious of what am I doing what am, what I'm, where do I want to have my pieces what are the ideal squares that's something that you are uh, practicing very well alright so this game is it has some uh, very interesting points well on one hand this uh, new opening for you that you tried out and uh, I advise you to look at this uh, other video that I'm uh, I mentioned and um, uh, well it's it's actually I can say that in general in this game I think that you did play safely and you did play well uh, you could have played a bit more aggressive uh, and I mean by for example instead of bishop to d6 bishop to b4 with some more active threats and also instead of uh, queen to c2 rook, uh, rook to c8 followed by rook to c2 those are let's say those moments where you could have been more dynamic more attacking and uh, I think that's perhaps the next step in this uh, development of your uh, chest strength is to try to find a bit more dynamic play a bit more attacking play alright I'll uh, leave it up to here I wish you lots of success in your future games and I'll just say goodbye for now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time